Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking a lot more about the Karen markers that I tried out in a new and must-have crafty supplies video. These are their metallic permanent markers. I also grabbed some deco brush pigment markers. When I highlighted them in the original video, I just asked if anybody would like to see more techniques with them or ideas on how to use them on cards, and a bunch of people said yes, they would. So here is that video. So let's jump right in and find several ways to use these fun markers in card making. I've mentioned before I don't generally buy a whole set of markers until I try a few individually first. And I really recommend that with this because the entire set of 84 markers is something like $300. So what you can do is buy a set of 12 for about 50, or you can go to Dick Blick and order them individually, which is what I did with the pigment brushes that I'm showing you right now. So I got these colors from the Deco Brush pigment markers from Karen Markers individually, and I just wanted to swatch them out really fast for you to show you the difference between using them on black cardstock and white cardstock. Now, the cool thing about these pens is that they can be used on a variety of surfaces. Think wood, acrylic, you know, all kinds of different decor type of projects can be done. But for card making, we can use them on different surfaces too. So for this first card, I'm going to use them on black cardstock. This is the Cosmo Cluster stamp set from the stamp market, and I'm going to stamp and heat emboss that on black cardstock to see how well they can color in on black cardstock. So I am going to add some white embossing powder to my sticky embossing ink and tap off the excess. Of course, I used my Rabbit Hole Designs embossing tool to really make sure that the embossing powder only sticks exactly where I want it, which is the stamped image. So you can see this is a nice large image. We'll get to try out a bunch of different colors because each of the black Hours I'll do in a different color. So to start out, I'm going to start with the leaves and the green that I have, and I'm just going to color them in. I'm not going to worry about doing anything fancy at this point. I just want to see the kind of coverage that I can get. And it's pretty good, I have to say. When I swatched these on the black cardstock, I was a little worried that they were a little thin and watery, and so they were showing through the black cardstock quite a bit. But when you take your time to just carefully color in the image and not go back and forth over anything too much, but just make sure that you're coloring it all in, you do get a nice pop of opaque color on top of that black cardstock, which just looks so cool because so many things can't be done on black cardstock, right? You can't really do Copics on black cardstock. You can do pencils for sure, but you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to color each of the flowers a different color so that you can see how opaque a, a color you can get from each of them. So you can see a little bit of the black showing through on parts of the pink and parts of the orange, but not so much on the blue. And those pink and orange ones I could cover up with a second coat once it was dry. You just don't want to try and color too much on the wet petal because it will just move it around and you'll still end up with empty spaces. So I have another blue that I thought I would go in and add a little bit of shading to the tips and centers of the flower. And then I'm gonna use those metallic Karen brush markers that I shared with you in that stocking stuffer video to add little bits of detail as well. Finally, I'm gonna take the white deco brush pigment marker, just like I would a gel pen or a paint pen, and add in some white details because that always adds so much interest to flowers. All you have to do is little dots, tiny little lines on the edge of the petal, and I really like the way the color stands out on the black. Now I am gonna die cut this, but you're still gonna see that black outline, which is so nice, and I'm gonna mat it on black as well. I did wanna stamp one of the sentiments from the stamp set, so I'm gonna do the same thing, a little anti-static powder tool, then stamp the sentiment in embossing ink, and then cover it up with the white embossing powder and heat set that. What I really love about a lot of the stamp markets um, stamp sets and dies is that they have dies for the sentiments and I am going to pop up this cluster of flowers. I'm going to use 
black foam squares so that really the whole effect of the black doesn't get ruined with white peeking out from the back. So I'm peeling off all those protective layers and then I'm gonna just brush away any excess powder that I had on there and lay this down. And I just, it's amazing to me how bright and vibrant the colors are on that black cardstock. I'm gonna cut some slivers of these foam squares because I'm gonna pop up the sentiment. Didn't want it to get too lost in the background there. And since it is black on black with just the white stamped sentiment, I thought popping it up might help with that. And it's a really sweet sentiment. It says you're doing great, which I think everybody could use that now and again, right? And I absolutely love how these look on black cardstock. So that is definitely one way that you can take advantage of these and have fun with them. I am also going to add just a couple of little strips of silver glitter cardstock. You can see this is a great way to use that mini trimmer from Tim Holtz. It cuts some really fine, thin strips of cardstock, which adds just a nice little detail to the edge there. Just wanted it to have a little something special on the side to really make everything pop. For the second card, we're gonna color with the markers on acetate. So I'm using the Judikins Embossable Acetate, these plastic sheets, and these are great because you can actually heat emboss on them. You just have to be careful not to hold the heat too long on there. You definitely wanna use lots of anti-static powder because acetate sheets have tons of static on them. So load it up with powder. You can always wipe it away later once everything is heat set and cooled off. So I'm going to stamp a stamp from the Ink Blot Shop. And I don't know if you've seen their stamps before, but they are so cute and unique and fun. And this is just a big rainbow with big clouds from this stamp set. So I'm going to stamp and heat emboss that this time with Hero Arts gold embossing powder. And I'm going to color it in, but I thought doing gold instead of the white like we did last time would add another twist to this and make it kind of fun. So again, when you're heat setting on that embossable plastic, get the tool nice and hot and then just hold it to the stamped image for a few seconds and then bring it away. This way you don't get too much warping. It may still warp a little bit and that's okay. Now I'm going to just color it in with the pigment markers this time. So I'm starting with those clouds and coloring it in with the white pigment marker. And again, you can use kind of a circular motion on the clouds, especially because they do have that circular shape to them. And then I also like to outline close to the embossing powder without going over it and then kind of fill it in. Now, with Copic markers, for example, something that you are going to keep for a lifetime, you don't want to color near embossing powder because it can get in the nib, it can destroy the nib. Of course, that's replaceable, but it can also get into the marker and then you'll always have it kind of in there mucking things up for you. These markers are not refillable. So I'm not as concerned. Yes, they're expensive, but I know at some point when I'm done with them, I'm just going to have to throw them away. once the ink is empty. So I'm not as concerned. And you can see here, I actually mixed two colors and then just wiped the excess away on a piece of plastic or paper. So I'm not gonna be as fussy with these as I would with my Copic markers that I intend to keep for my lifetime. But that is your choice. So I am just saying, if you want to be extra special careful and don't go over those embossed edges, that is something you can do to keep the marker safe for as long as you can use it. I cut out a wood frame from Waffle Flower's wooden frames die, and then I put the <laughs> foam adhesive right on the back without putting the window plastic behind it. I don't know what I was thinking. I wanna create a shaker, but it's not the end of the world, just we'll fix it, it's fine. So I'm just gonna put a piece of white foam tape around the entire frame, and now I am going to cut another frame, which I had enough craft cardstock to do, so I cut a second frame, and that I'm going to place on a piece of window plastic. Now the reason that I fussy cut out the rainbow and I'm not just adhering that to the wooden frame is because I like those big clouds on the side and I didn't want them covered up by the frame. So 
This would be a really fun thing to do if you have a smaller image that you could actually use the colored in window plastic as your shaker window. So there we go, I adhered the two together. Now I actually have a frame and I have foam on the back, which is what I wanted to do from the get go, but that's okay. Just took a little detour there. Now I'm gonna use some of my favorite Pretty Pink Posh clear confetti inside. I should probably buy this by the truckload because I really pretty much like to use this with every shaker card I ever create. And I always use up the whole thing in a video. I'm gonna use the rest of it in the next card. All right, so then I'm just going to lay a piece of white cardstock down right behind that one, just have it nice and straight. For my little rainbow here, I'm just putting tape runner behind it because with the coloring, you're not gonna really be able to see the tape runner. And then I'll lay that on top. They have some great curved sentiments in the stamp set as well. So I am going to stamp and heat emboss one of those sentiments on some more embossable window plastic. This way I can emboss the sentiment with the same gold embossing powder that I used as the outline for the rainbow. And this way everything will match and will all come together. Again, if you had smaller images, you could have done all of this on the piece that is going to be your shaker window. But because I kind of use something a little bit larger, I decided to kind of layer things on top of each other. So sending happy your way, it's such a sweet little sentiment. It's curved, I'm gonna flip it over, and again, just a little bit of tape runner, you're not gonna be able to see it, especially with all those shaker goodies going on in the background, and just place that on top of that window that we created with the cool coloring with the pigment markers. I just love the way they look. There's something very, I don't know, 80s about that, I think. It's very cute. Now we're gonna work on vellum. So this time I am just taking the pigment markers and scrubbing them kind of back and forth to create like paint swatches on this vellum. And of course, after the rainbow stamped image, I had to do another rainbow. I was like, oh yeah, rainbows, yay. So here we go. I'm gonna complete this with the blue this time. And I'm gonna do that twice, two pieces of vellum that are about a2 and then all of the colors down here. Now you can see when they go over each other, there is a little bit of blending there. So these are water-based markers and they do blend together a little bit. You just have to be careful of the nibs. Again, just wipe it off on the background. I'm using Waffle Flowers Thanks Big Print Dye and now I'm going to use Waffle Flowers Infinity Shaker Covers. If you've seen any of my videos, you know how much I love these. They're so simple and easy to create. I can't find my bone folder, which is why I'm just doing it with my fingers, but if you have a bone folder, that's really easy way to get those to really bend down and be nice and flat. Okay, so I put one of the painted rainbows in there with the vellum and I take off those little protective layers off of the adhesive and just lay it down. The thing with the vellum is it wants to curl a little bit, especially when you paint on it. So just hold it straight while you're bringing in those side flaps and the bottom flap. This way you don't have a curled image inside your shaker infinity shaker cover there. See, nice and flat. So the last flap stays open so that you can pour in those shaker goodies. And like I said, love those pretty pink posh clear confettis. So I poured the rest of the bag in there and now I have to go place an order because I need more. And take off that last protective layer and fold it back. And then you have a very cool look to the shaker, infinity shaker, because the background is vellum. So it's still a little bit see-through, kind of like a frosted glass look. I used some liquid adhesive to adhere the thanks onto the thanks shadow and then just hold that in place for a second while it dries. This way, again, it doesn't really curl up. And then I'm gonna use little bits of white foam squares behind the colored letters. You won't see it, I promise. And then pull off those protective layers off the foam square and just lay it right on top there where the pink matches up with the pink all the way to the blue matching up with the blue. And if you send a card like this that's a thank you card, you could absolutely put a letter in there instead of having the sentiment inside because sometimes when I say thank you, I wanna write so much inside the card so a letter would be perfect. And I absolutely love, again, just how you can see through that frosted glass look of the vellum in the back and 
how those markers can paint on vellum, acetate, and black cardstock. I was really excited to make this video because I love finding different ways to use the supplies that I have. I feel like it gives them more bang for their buck. But I'd love to hear what you think about these Karen brush markers and if you would use the metallics or the pigments or both in your card making. Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget, if you want to see the metallic markers swatched out, I will link to that video over here. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. We were close. We were so close. It was just like running, running the mouth, running it. And okay, just take a breath, take it slow. I have a lot to do in like a couple of days. So that's why I'm a little <laughs> unhinged. I don't know. <laughs>